Law of cosines. Law of cosines and law of sines help us deal with triangles when we don't have right triangles. So when we don't have the 90 degree and sine and cosine and tangent don't apply when we don't have the right 90 degree angle, at least in the traditional sense, um, we have non-right triangles, we can use law of cosines. So when do we use law of cosines? When we have a side, side, side situation. When we know three of the sides in the ang but nothing about the angles. Or if maybe if we have a side angle side situation where we have the angle in between two sides that we know. And we can find something out about the opposite side. So, law of cosines. I'm going on the assumption that most of you have seen this, but I'll kind of teach it as if you haven't. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. That's your regular Pythagorean theorem. But then if it's not a right triangle, you add this minus 2ab cosine of c. Notice big time that this c and this c, remember that capital letters deal with angles, lowercase letters deal with sides. When we have this angle c that we're looking for, or if we have this side c that we're looking for, they're across from each other. And so whatever this angle is, this side has to be across from it. Not all your triangles are going to be ABC. Not all your triangles are going to have angle C that you're given. And so it's important to realize that this side, this angle, are opposite. So, if C equals 8, B equals 10, opposite of B, and angle A is 60. We want to find A, lowercase a. Notice this side A, this angle A, and this side A is what we're looking for. And so in our equation, they're going to be across from each other. And so I'm trying to find side A. And so that's going to be A squared rather than C squared in this case. I'm going to use my other two sides, B squared plus C squared. doesn't matter what order they're in because we're adding them. Minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of a. Notice that this is in the same spot as this. Very important. So whatever a squared is, we've got 8 squared, and I'll put them in the right spot. It doesn't matter which order you do it in. 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 10 times 8 times the cosine of 60 degrees. Notice, these two can be added, but you can't multiply these or subtract these from that because they're connected with the cosine. Very, very critical, and I see a lot of problems with order of operations when we don't deal with it. What I do is I just type it all in at the same time. So, 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 10 times 8 times the cosine of 60 degrees. So that's 84. That's a squared. Notice that you have to be in degree mode in order to get that. And then take the square root of your answer, and you get 9.2. And that's your answer. It's across from 60 looks like it fits into your 10 and your 8 just fine. So, let's say we have y is 11, so across from angle y, across from um, angle z is 25, and we know angle x is 45. Why don't you guys try this one on your own? We're going to find x, which is across from angle x, in a very similar way. Hit pause, Try it out, see if you got the answer right. So x squared, y squared plus z squared, minus 2 times y times z times the cosine of 45 degrees. 11 squared plus 25 squared minus 
2 times 11 times 25 times the cosine of 45 degrees. Notice how we're getting answer by hitting second answer. And so 357.1, and then I take the square root of it, and I get 18.9. So, how'd we do? We can also use, those were the side angle side situations, we can also use it to find the angle if we have a side 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 situation. So, let's draw this triangle and then we'll go up and do what we were talking about up there. So, R, S, and T doesn't matter how you draw it. R is 33, S is 65, and T is 56. What I'm looking for is S, angle S, and I'm going to mark that as a theta. It's a lot easier, since we're going to be doing this a lot of times, is to get this cosine of C by itself and resolve our triangle. So let's move A squared over and B squared over. Let's subtract that over. So C squared minus A squared minus B squared equals negative 2AB cosine of C. Now if we divide, because this is multiplied by the cosine of C, divide by negative 2A and B, divide by negative 2A and B, cancels that out, and we get the cosine of C equals C squared minus A squared minus B squared divided by negative 2 times A times B. And so there's your ver A version of the cosine solved for. However, most people take care of this negative by putting the negative up top instead until it makes it negative C squared plus plus. And so they've pulled it out front and just put it up top instead and so the cosine of C, just so you have fewer negatives, and they rearrange the top. A squared plus B squared minus C squared divided by 2AB. Very, very important if you're going to use this that you see again that the C and the C A and B don't matter which one is which because multiplication and addition can be done in any order, but the C has to be subtracted. So whatever angle you have, you're doing has to be subtracted in the back. So, cosine of S equals R squared plus T squared minus S squared over 2 times R times T. 33 squared plus 60, sorry, not 65, plus 56 squared minus 65 squared. All over 2 times 33 times 56. So you can deal with this first by doing the top and then multiplying the bottom. I'm going to deal with it all in one step. So, top is in parentheses because I want to multiply the top first. And then the bottom is in parentheses. Sorry, I'm going to add and subtract the top first. And then the bottom is in parentheses because I want to make sure those are all multiplied together before I divide. So, we get zero. Everything canceled out must have been a squared plus b squared minus c squared was equal to zero. Zero divided by anything is still zero. So that's kind of crazy. But what's that tell us? Well, the cosine, if you take the inverse cosine now,
of 0, where is the cosine value equal to 0? At 90 degrees. And so we had ourselves a 90 degree angle. And so now if you notice that you could have just done 33 squared plus 56 squared, and if you take the square root, you get 65, which is our longest side. So a squared plus b squared does equal c squared. So Pythagorean theorem holds up. So you know I have a right triangle. So let's try another example. Last example for law cosines. 2.2 .2 is our r. 1.3 is our s. And 1.6 is our t. It says find the measure of the largest angle. Talked last year in geometry, and the concept, the logic is still true, that your angle across from your largest side is your largest angle. It's got to be. So let's find angle R. So your cosine of angle R. And again, you've got just your two sides go first, and then the opposite side goes across. So 1.6 squared plus 1.3 squared minus the 2.2 .2 squared. It's very important that these two match up. We talked about that earlier. R was across from the 2.2. .2. And then 1.6 times 1.3 times 2 out front. So 1.6 squared plus 1.3 squared minus 2.2 .2 squared that's all in parentheses up top, parentheses in the bottom. 2 times 1.6 times 1.3. So we have a cosine value that's negative. Cosine values are negative when you're in the second quadrant. So we know we have an obtuse angle here. If we do inverse cosine of our answer, get 98.2 degrees. So cosine of our r was negative 0.14 2, and so that meant inverse cosine of negative 0.142, again you're in degrees, is 98.2 degrees. And that's the law of cosines.